Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or if this is your first time watching then welcome. <laughs> Today I'm going to be showing you how to do this smoky black and silver and beige cut crease look using the Jeffree Star cremated palette. There has been a lot of drama around this palette in particular the name it's just bad timing that this so happened to be in the works just before a global pandemic uh, where many people are getting cremated and people aren't being able to see their loved ones before they get cremated. So I understand why that would be a bit off-putting for some people but I really like using cool tone neutrals because I have cool undertoned skin and I have blue eyes so I really like the way that cool tones look on myself and I also really love the Jeffree Star eyeshadow formula so when I saw that there was a whole palette full of cool toned neutrals and sparkly silvers and stuff like that I really wanted to get it. I do have the Lime Crime Venus Immortalis palette which I got last year when it came out because I realized I didn't have any silver eyeshadow this was before I got my conspiracy palette, so I got this to basically do the job of what the cremated palette does. But when you open it up, you can see that there's one black and one grey, and one white, but the white isn't matte, it's um, shimmery, so that doesn't really cover a whole lot for me. I mean, it really kind of limits the things that you can do. So I wanted to expand on that and have more options. So that is why I got the cremated palette and the names of the eyeshadows and the palette don't really bother me too much because obviously there are some interesting shade names in there but I mean what else would you expect from Jeffree Star? He did name an eyeshadow in the Drawbreaker palette so yeah I guess that kind of goes to show um, that he doesn't really take himself too seriously which I really like. I like to think that I don't take myself too seriously, but then I sometimes I do. <laughs> but um, let's open the palette because I just want to show you how cool it is that you can like... slide it out like that and yeah, it looks completely different without the box. So I will be keeping the box for this. I actually threw out all the boxes from my other ones. So that's actually a bit of a shame. I wish I didn't. So in this look, I tried to incorporate as many shades as I could because I really wanted to test it out and just, yeah, try as many shades as I could basically. I didn't want to use just like three shades. So I used nine different shades, which is a lot for one look. Um, so it is a bit of a complicated look, but I really like the way that it turned out. And at the end of the video, I will also just go over my first impressions of the palette and just talk a little bit about what I like and what I don't like about the palette. So if you would like to see how I create this look and hear my first impressions, then keep on watching. Okay, so eyebrows, white eyeshadow base, and I've just put the base in the crease and brought it out in this area here, the little outer third area, because I'm going to be blending the crease colors out to be like a winged eyeliner type vibe. And so we shall be taking the cremated palette. I just got this yesterday and I wasn't supposed to get it until next week and I was going to be in a different city by then and was going to have to get it sent up from there so it's going to be a whole mission so I'm really glad that it arrived in time for me to start using it. I thought it was quite crazy actually. I know you guys probably do this too. I constantly check the tracking when I order something online because I just want to know like when I can expect to receive it and this was in Sydney on like Sunday night. By 1 a.m. on Monday it was in Auckland and then by 9 a.m. on Monday it was in Wellington with the courier driver to be delivered. So I just thought that was really crazy. So shout out to DHL and Courier Post for getting that delivered nice and promptly. But yeah, so obviously because I've done the base and the crease, I'm going to be doing the crease colors first. And let's just take a quick look at the palette before I go and mess it all up. 
So, I'm sure you've seen it, but there we have the shades, obviously all neutral colours, um, cool tones, and I'm really excited to try these like sparkly ones and this one here. So let's get going. Oh wait, let me peel this plastic off because that is so satisfying, which I'm struggling to do with my nails. By the way, check out my nails. I totally didn't even know that I was going to be getting my palette and this was kind of like a coincidence, but it's going to match all of my cremated looks that I do. Ah. <laughs> Love that. One thing that I'm happy about with this palette is that it's like easy to hold. So with my Conspiracy palette, you see how it's got like this bit here? It's like difficult to hold, so you can't really... Well, I don't use this mirror when I'm doing my makeup because, yeah, it's just an uncomfortable way to hold it. So I'm really happy that this cremated palette is nice and easy to hold so I can just go between. I don't have to, like, go between like that. I just thought I would mention that because that is very helpful. So I'm going to go in with this shade here called Hearse, the black one. And I'm going to use this small blending brush. This is a Sigma E36. And I will, as I do, every time I use this brush, I just compare it to a regular size blending brush just so you can see the difference. So that's going to help us get the color like in a nice defined area but it's also going to make sure that the edges are blended out slightly because, you know, it can be quite hard to blend out black. So we want to make sure we get it right from the get-go. So I'm taking that brush and I'm packing on that black shade into the crease. So from the tear duct up through the crease and bringing that out in a winged shape out in the outer portion of the eye there. And I'm applying this in little circular motions and that's going to help blend out the edges so that when we go in and apply the next shades, it's not going to be too hard to blend out. And I find that that also just really packs and buffs that on so that, you know, you get it really stuck on the eye. <laughs> and we want to keep this quite close to the crease because once we add in the next shades, that's going to drag the color up closer to the brow bone and we don't want the black to come up too far. And I'm also going to just fill in the gap between, you know, the outer corner of the eye and that winged shape. Just so we get that whole area black. Alright, so that is the base for the crease down. And as you can see, this eye is, like, it comes up higher than this eye. Which is super annoying. It happens, like, pretty much every time. Because my eyes have, like, different levels of hoodedness. <laughs> Just to, I don't know why I pointed that out. I just wanted to let you guys know that I know. So you don't think that I like didn't know. <laughs> but yeah, so that is the base. And now we will begin to blend that out. So I'm going to go in with this shade here called Wednesday. And a domed crease brush. And I'm using this obviously to blend out the black. So I'm applying this in little circular motions half on the black and half on the skin above the black and the little circular motions are going to ensure that it blends the two colors together nicely and also packs it on like I was saying before and we want to obviously do this all the way across the crease and down the winged part of the eyeshadow as well so basically surrounding the entire black part we just kind of want to focus on the blend between the black and the Wednesday shade um, because we will blend out the Wednesday shade using a, another lighter shade as well. Okay, so as you can see, that's slightly blended out, but obviously we will need to blend out some more. And you can tell here that the black has lost its, you know, pigment from blending it out. So we will be adding in some more of that after. But for now, we'll just focus on the blending. So I'm going to take, obviously, a blending brush. And I think I will go in with this shade here called Life Insurance. And so basically the exact same thing I was doing before, blending that out using little circular motions all the way across the crease and down the winged portion of the eyeshadow. I did, you just want to be doing this very lightly and placing hardly any pressure on the brush. 
And another thing that we want to be doing is the brush is likely going to pick up some of the darker grey and black shades while we're doing this. And you don't really want to be blending out the ed edges with the darker shades on the brush because it's just going to affect your blend. So something that I do to combat this is just making sure that I'm constantly putting more pigment and more eyeshadow on my brush so that, you know, the brush is like saturated and it can't pick up any more pigment. So, and so we just want to do this until we get the edges nice and blended out. Okay, so that blend is starting to look pretty good, but as you can see, the pigment has gone a little bit and also the black is not so blended. So what I'm going to do now is just go back in with those same brushes that I was using for the crease and the same colors and I'm just going to cycle through the different shades and just build up the pigment and get that blend nice and even. We really want the black to be as black as possible and pack as much of a punch as it can. So yeah, just making sure that there is enough pigment before we move on to the next step. Okay, so the blend is looking nice and blended and what we're going to do next is prepare the eyelid to do a cut crease. So to do that, it's what I do all the time. I'm taking a flat rounded concealer brush and some Vaseline and I'm just going to basically carve out the crease how I normally would with a base but using the Vaseline. It's just going to lift up the eyeshadow and you know the products that are on the eyelid and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cotton tip and wipe that off and then I'm going to do this again. So just making sure that I get all of the product off the eyelid so that when I go to put the base on it, it doesn't mix with any eyeshadow or any other products that are on the eyelid. And that will give us a nice blank canvas to place the base onto. Okay, so the eyelid is nice and clean and prepped to cut the crease. So to do that, I'm going to be using my P. Louise base in the shade Rumor Zero, which is the white one. And... I'm going to be applying that with a flat rounded concealer brush and so I'm basically following the line that I've already done so going from the tear duct area of the eye along the crease to the outer third where I'm just about where I'm winging it out and I'm just going to leave it at that I'm not going to continue it all the way down to the you know, outer corner of the eye because what I'm doing is I'm just going to apply this in a band about, I don't know, half a centimetre thick all the way across. And then once it reaches the outer corner of the eye, that's going to be blended out into the black shade. Okay, so we've got that little band of base in the eye, or in the crease to be exact. And now we're going to add some colour to this. There's not really going to be colour, it's just going to be eyeshadow. <laughs> I'm going to add in three different shades. So that means that I shall need three different brushes. So I'm going to take these three mini eyeshadow brushes. These are just the smallest brushes that I have. And the colours that I'm going to be using are this shade here called Death Blow, this shade here called Casket Ready, and this shade here called Last Respects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the white shade on the inner third portion of that strip that we've got going on. Then I'm going to blend that into Casket Ready, the medium coloured shade. And then in the outer third of the band of base, I'm going to be applying Last Respects shade. So that's the darkest of the three. And just making sure that these are blended together nicely. And we don't have to worry about covering the entire part that we've got the base on because I'm not really wanting it that thick. That's just how it came out when I did it so um, yeah it's gonna be a little bit thinner than that when we carve it out again okay so this um, last respects shade come out a lot darker than I thought it was going to so I'm gonna go in with this shade here called obituary and I'm just going to use another small brush and I'm going to use that to blend those two darker colors together just to get it more of a gradient Okay, <laughs> it's looking very interesting at the moment, but I think that it'll look quite cool once we do the next step, which is to carve out the crease again. So using the P. Louise base again and that same concealer brush, just going to carve out the crease all the way out to the outer third where 
we've prepped the eyelid and just leaving a small you know strip of color or strip of what we've just done in the crease and making sure that we get that edge nice and tidy we're not bothering to do the Vaseline this time because the color that we're putting on top is darker so it's not really going to matter and making sure that in the edge in the outer third where we're meeting up with the black we just want to blend that out slightly so I'm going to use a combination of the brush and also my finger to make sure we don't have any harsh lines there and as we were doing before just using tapping motions to apply this so that we can get a nice even base and yeah we don't want to be mixing up the color with the base too much <sighs> okay so we've got that carved out and <laughs> Then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take that black and the grey shades, the black and the darker grey, and the same brushes that I was using for those, and I'm going to blend that into the outer corner of the cut crease and just slightly onto the eyelid, making sure that we get this step right because once we apply this there's kind of no going back, it's going to pretty much stay like that. So you want to make sure that you get a good blend in this step. And then once we've done that, I'm going to go in with this shade here called Paul Bearer and all over shader brush. And I'm also going to use the same brush that I was using to apply the white and the little crease thing. And I'm just applying that all over the lid and using the smaller brush to get right up close to where the line is for the cut crease and blending this out into the black and the grey that we have in the outer corner of the eye. So I've just finished this eye and I've noticed, well you can't not notice, this Paul Bearer shade is like burning the crap out of my eyelid, like it's really painful. So I really like the way it looks, um, so I'm going to do my other eye but I feel like this eye might start watering soon so we'll just have to see how this goes. I'm really disappointed in that. I had the same thing happen with a few of the shimmery shades from the Conspiracy palette. Wow. So hopefully this will calm down and, you know, go away. But I feel like I'm not ever going to be able to wear this Paul Bearer shade again. And I'm a little bit nervous about the other shades, like Angel of Death, especially because they look like they're the same formula. So, yeah. <laughs> okay so that is the top of the eye complete now we're moving to the under eye so I'm taking my P. Louise base and the concealer brush that I use to cut the crease and I'm applying that to my under eye area making sure that the edges are blended out so that we don't have any harsh lines showing through once we put the foundation on top then we're going to go in with the brush that we used for well, all the same brushes that we used in the crease and all three crease colors that we used and i'm starting with the black and applying this to the under eye and then i'm going to apply the medium shade gray and then the lightest shade to blend that all out so just making sure this is nicely blended and connects up well with the wing that we've got in the outer corner of the eye all right now i'm just going to do my face makeup and then I'll be back to finish off the rest of the look. Okay, next I'm going to add in a highlight shade. So I'm going in with this shade here called Diamond Ashes. And I'm going to be applying that using a small pencil brush. And I'm just going to apply this to my tear duct area and also to my brow bone. And for my face highlight, I'm going to take my Lime Crime Mermaids highlight. And I'm going to go in with the middle shade called Pearl which is like a, obviously like a pearly color. I can't open it and show you because one of them is broken and it will all fall out. And to apply that, I'm going to take this large fluffy highlighting brush and just applying this in circular motions to my cheekbones, the tip of my nose, and also my cupid's bow. Now I'm going to add some eyeliner into the waterline. So I'm gonna be taking my NYX crayon eyeliner in the shade black and just applying this to my waterline obviously okay so I've just wiped off most of the product off of my lips and now I'm going to pop on some lipstick so I'm just going to apply my MAC lipstick in the shade Honey Love 
and I'm not going to use any lip liner for this because I just want it to be you know a nice cool toned nude that doesn't really stand out too much so I don't really want it to be too defined okay now the last thing left to do is just to apply mascara and lashes so the lashes I'm going to be using today are my EXO Beauty Foam Ink Lashes these are in the style Thunder I'm going to pop these on off camera and then I'll be back to show you guys the completed look Here we have the completed look with lashes. I think this look is very effective. I love using black in the crease because I think that it just makes any eye pop. And I love using super shimmery shades with the black as well because it just has that um, nice contrast. And so here we have it. <laughs> now in terms of the cremated palette, I am very happy with the matte shades that I used. To elaborate, I think the um, black and the grey shades blended out together really nicely and quite easily for dark shades. I didn't really spend that much time blending and the colours work really well together. It almost looks like I've just blended out one colour. I am happy about that because that was the look that I was trying to achieve. Also, the shades that I blended in the um, crease, so those kind of brownie, beigey shades, they blended out really easy as well, surprisingly, because it can be quite hard to blend when you're just doing such a small area. Once I added in that fourth shade to blend the lighter shade and the darker shade together, um, then it blended really nicely and seamlessly, so I am really excited to use those shades as well. I am very disappointed in the silver shade, the Paul Bearer shade, just simply due to the fact that it burnt the crap out of my eye. <laughs> I was not happy with that. I also had the same thing happen with the, um, some of the shades in the Conspiracy palette. So that um, Illuminati shade, the dark green, that burnt really badly for me as well. And I did end up getting that shade in my eye and it burnt my eyeball and turned it red as well. So I have a feeling that these have the same ingredient in it that is causing that reaction so I'm gonna have to look into the ingredients list and see what it is and I know that other people have had the same thing happen as well because I did kind of look into it when I found that with the conspiracy palette so yeah I'm not sure if that's just like something with people with sensitive skin get because I do have sensitive skin or if it's like a more broader issue so if you guys have the cremated palette and that have had that shade burn your eye then leave a comment down below and let me know because um, I am really interested to see if it's like an, a problem with everyone or just with some people. I also really love this highlight shade the diamond ashes shade. I was tempted to use it on my face as highlight but when I used ranch from the conspiracy palette as a highlight shade I noticed that it wasn't sheer it was opaque so it left like a white band on my cheek here and I was worried that that was going to happen again but I will try that because it is such a nice highlight shade and yeah I try to use as many shades as possible to test them all out I guess so I am pretty happy with the most of the shades and I love the look of the Paul Bearer shade too don't get me wrong like it looks really nice just the problem with the burning was yeah the only problem for me and I am worried that that's going to happen with Angel of Death that really dark glittery black shade because they look like they're the same formula to me so we shall see with that one myself and obviously a lot of other people because I saw this everywhere on Twitter when this palette was you know what's the word like you know when when they released what the palette was going to be a lot of the shades are very similar and every shade that I used was quite different so I am excited to kind of do a bit of a comparison with them and see like if they actually look different on the eye and one thing that I will point out as well is that this grey is obviously a blue toned grey so something I learned when I dyed my hair grey is that black isn't a colour so it's just a really dark shade of another colour 
So you either really have to have a blue toned black or grey or a green toned black or grey. So this one is a blue one because when it blends out it has a blue hue. And I think that in this palette what he's done is done some blue undertones and some green undertones. So I'm excited to try those and see if that's how it reflects on the eye. But yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, then please thumbs up and subscribe and tick that little bell button so you can get notified every time I post a new video. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one.